Hey guys, I hope that paper one and paper two chemistry have gone okay so far this year. This is just a little video for some possible things that could come up in paper three for 2024, OCRA chemistry A level. Now, this is all with a big caveat as usual. Uh, what can we expect? I mean, in paper three, we could expect really anything. And at the time that I'm recording this video, you are sitting paper two, so I have no idea what's on paper two. Um, and I have some idea of what came up on paper one from what you lovely people have told me. So um, let's talk about some things. What I'm gonna talk about is maybe some topic areas and particular sort of the practical techniques to focus on, because we know there's a heavy practical focus. Um, but generally, I guess, you know, anything could happen. So obviously make sure your revision is as thorough as it can be. So topic areas. Um, it occurred to me there's not been much on bonding and structure in benzene compared to alkenes. So looking at that like pi bonding system, the delocalization of electrons as compared to just the overlap in an alkene, the sort of electron density, the stability of that comparison, you know, with um, cyclohexene and that double bond in the ring compared to the Kekulé structure delocalized system. So possibility, of course, it could have come up in paper two. I don't know. So if it came up in paper two, then ignore me. Um, isotopes and relative atomic mass hasn't really come up. And I think um, at the beginning of paper three and sometimes at the end, there's quite often now a sort of mixed questions where there are just a series of very short questions and so something like a relative atomic mass calculation that's where that kind of thing can come up definitions of isotopes definitions of relative atomic mass and calculations of relative atomic mass a good old group seven don't forget about them just things like displacement reactions especially with relation to redox and periodic trends We've had a good periodic trend question in terms of melting and boiling points, but perhaps not so much in terms of reactivity trends. So just our, and also because the group seven, the displacement reactions is a good practical area where it might come up and it's, it's sort of like, you know, you're not quite sure, then go back over, make sure you know your colours of bromine and iodine and chlorine aqueous solutions and what you would observe and the ionic equations for those reactions. Enthalpy changes, so not a great deal in paper one on that. Um, so I'm thinking Hess's law and also experiments for enthalpy changes, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, so just being able to calculate them from experiment and from Hess cycles as well. And ionisation enthalpy, again, we've had a lot of periodicity in terms of melting and boiling point, perhaps not so much. And that, again, is another area for those shorter questions. Um, so we're talking about trends in first ionisation energy across the period, but also our ionisation energies of successive ones for one element. So being able to spot what group an element is in and then make predictions about the formula of its compounds, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to move on to some thoughts about practical techniques and also just experimental type questions. I get a lot of students asking what practicals they think might come up. Again, we don't know. And I also don't know what's on paper two. So feel free, by the way, to drop in the comments if any of these things have been in paper two, just in case someone wasn't paying attention. Um, and that'll be really, really helpful to know. So titration, we obviously we had titration in paper one. Um, that was a redox, so that still leaves scope for acid-base titration, and in particular, making a standard solution or making up dilutions like of a known concentration. So being able to make calculations about how much to add, how to use the volumetric flask, the apparatus that you would use and the techniques for making those, and that could come up in the context of titrations or in rates experiments, anywhere where I need to make a solution, basically. Um, for organic, then I've already mentioned organic liquid prep. So the using the separating funnel with the two layers and the different 
uh, steps for doing that. And I don't know whether it came up in paper two or not. Also just distillation, a little shout for making sure that you can draw the apparatus for distillation, that you can spot errors in apparatus, that kind of thing as well. Um, hydrolysis of haloalkanes. Again, I don't know whether that's come up in paper two, but as an organic practical, so the idea of monitoring how fast the precipitates form with silver nitrate. Again, it's got links to rates, it's got links to mechanisms, it's got links to practical techniques, organic chemistry, testing for ions. It's really popular kind of paper three territory because it's quite synoptic. It's got links to bond enthalpy because we're talking about the iodoalkanes being a lot more, uh, reacting a lot faster because they have a weaker bond. So get yourself practicing on that. Testing for ions, of course, links into that because we're testing for the halide ions, but testing for the anions specifically and not been a lot. There's been a bit of transition metal flow chart stuff, uh, but maybe an unknown transition metal compound as well. Measuring enthalpy changes, just a shout out for combustion, copper can, spirit burner underneath, make sure that you can describe that kind of experiment, not just to do the results of it, but also say how you could carry that out, potential six marker territory. Um, comparing combustion enthalpies as well in terms of bond making and bond breaking. And in terms of rates, practicals, maybe just checking over our, our Arrhenius graph. So there was a straight line graph last year for delta G, um, which means I'm probably going to go back to some Arrhenius stuff this year looking at you know the effect of temperature and determining activation energy from those graphs. Um, just make sure you could also describe some practical techniques for monitoring rates. If you get a longer question about rates of reaction and you have to explain what you're going to do in a practical, make sure you're very clear on um, if like how many readings you're going to take. So are you going to do a graph? If you're going to do a graph, it might say in the question to say what you would do with your results. So be really clear about what you would plot on each axis and how that graph would show you, for example, the orders or the activation energy. Make sure you always talk about monitoring the time in a rates practical and that you think about your control variables, concentration and volume of solutions and temperature being the most important ones if you're controlling temperature using a water bath to do that, keeping things separate, and then mixing them together afterwards after they've come to the right temperature. So lots of little points to think about with um, rates practicals. So just a reminder, I know it's getting pretty late in the revision day now, but if you haven't found my retrieval practice quizzes, they're actually really helpful for those, uh, they're helpful revision for those shorter questions that I was talking about, where you just get like lots and lots of questions about inorganic chemistry or about you know atomic structure kind of stuff um, and there's also some practice questions and walkthroughs which have some good more tricky bonding shapes and molecules stuff of course if you haven't got my practice papers or predicted papers then go through all three because you know there might be something on paper two that comes up in paper three and so on and also I've got an extended response booklet which is like a load of six mark questions. So, and if you're on my mailing list or you've seen it on any of my social media and I'll drop a link in the comments too, if you fill in my student questionnaire, which is just like a short five minute job on the things that you use for A-level chemistry online, then you will get a 2.99 voucher for my website, which means that you can buy either the predict, like a predicted paper or you can buy the walkthroughs for the predicted paper or you can get the extended response booklet for free. So bonus and good luck with the rest of your exams.